This video is sponsored by NordPass. More about them later in the video. Engineering as a profession, it doesn't matter what field you're studying, has quite a broad range of topics that you need to focus on. And now it doesn't even matter whether you're a student, just starting out or progressing your professional career, we need to make sure we're up with the latest information. So these are my top tips on what to study and how to effectively study for engineering. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. Now, when I first started out in engineering, I possibly made all the mistakes that you could do. You see, I could find engineering somewhat intuitive. So most of the time I could get by just by thinking through the problems. This was both a blessing and a curse as it made me really love engineering, made things easier, but also means that I got a little bit lazy and made all the mistakes in the book. For example, leaving things to the last minute and just cramming for that exam the night before or being somewhat lazy and just passively reading through my notes instead of actually taking the effective note and the aspects that actually made me understand the topics better. Most of the time, just by raw talent, you can sometimes get by, but if you really truly wanna be good and truly understand the depth that engineering goes to, you need to put the effort in and study the material. As things don't come easy, they come with time and education and learning about structural mechanics. When you're first starting to think about how should I be effectively studying, everyone's going to be slightly different. See, people learn in different ways. Are you a visual learner? Do you have a look and see and understand? Or are you an auditory learner? Everything you hear a lockdown in place so you can make sure that you can learn more from that auditory aspect. Are you a kinesthetic worker where you actually learn by doing, so putting your hands on and getting dirty and learning from these things? Or are you more reading and writing? So it means that all that passive activity of reading through the books and taking effective notes. Now, most of the time, Yes, you may be more effective at one than the other, but most people are a combination of all of these. So you wanna make sure that not only are you just focus on the one that you're good at, but also focusing on these different aspects as well. Well, number one is really learning about how you learn, so know which areas you should spend most of your time in. But number two is about generating your own material, grabbing material from different locations to make sure you've got as broad a range of material that you can focus on to learn in different ways. So not just relying on the university note, which only really give you guidance about where you should be focusing your time. Now, look, you've come to YouTube, so obviously you're trying to learn more about engineering. So you're better than most of the people out there, but not just relying on my YouTube channel, but also focusing on different areas and forums such as Eng Tips or having signing up to different organizations where you can have a broad range of material that will help you improve your engineering skills. The next thing is about how your memory actually works. And it can be quite hard to remember a broad range of topics, especially in specific details. So there's a number of ways that you can go about this. If there's just some information that you need to remember, using things as acronyms of stories will help lock in that memory better. For example, I'm sure we've all gone to the piano or music lesson. And we have two acronyms here. First is FACE, which is the letter between each of the lines above you. Or the other one is every good boy deserves fruit which is then each of the lines instead of the lines between them. So you know which letters of the piano you actually need to play. Both these are really good ways to lock in certain portions of your memory. So you're looking at the material and saying, how can I have this something that I can relate to? Now, this is really good for things that you just need to remember. For whatever reason, this is you need to know how to do something in a certain way. I would recommend that you would use these things in limited aspects and focus more on actually understanding the engineering as if we can work it out from first principles it means that you have a truly better understanding of what you need to know. Now, but this brings us into number four, which is actually about getting down and doing the study. Too often that you've been sitting around, just lazing around, either watching TV, YouTube, doing something else, instead of actually focusing on the study that you need to. And what you should do in these situations, you just commit to five or 10 minutes. So just by committing to a small period of time, it means that you can more effectively study and you will get over that first hurdle it's like going down to the gym. You just put the gym clothes on. That simple aspect of putting gym clothes on means that you're more likely to walk down and actually work out. You've actually started the study, you've got that good habits in and you're studying more often. After a while, you don't want to commit to a whole day of nonstop study. Over time, your concentration starts to drop off. Now, when this happens, you need to take a small break. What you should be doing those small breaks is either going out for a walk, doing a little bit of exercise, moving away from your desk, listening to something, but it should be something that is not too engaging, but takes your mind off the aspects that you're actually doing. Well, if you're locked into something more like YouTube, it could lock you in and you watch more and more and more. So it can delay that time. So it's about taking the breaks in the right area. So taking a five, 10 minute break, walking around for a little bit and coming back to that study table. These small little breaks will help your concentration go above and down. So you're more effectively studying and be more useful over the whole day as opposed to if you just study the whole time, it goes down 
and won't peak back up. Thank you NordPass for sponsoring this video. NordPass is Advanced Business Password Manager. So not only does it have that password manager, but also allows you to share business credentials, such as credit card information. So when staff need to buy something, you don't need to hand your credit card over, but you can share it through NordPass, meaning that you can keep your information safe and secure. And whenever those staff leave, you can revoke their access so they no longer have access to it anymore. But the really key feature of NordPass is its Data Breach Security Manager that accesses 24 seven. So to detect as soon as data breaches actually occurred. So if you want to try out this advanced business password manager, NordPass, you can try it with the code Brendan Hasty for a free three month free trial, no strings attached. So why wouldn't you jump onto it and start securing your confidential information today? Your life should not just be all about study. Exercise is also important to make sure you're in it for the longevity. Studies have shown that strenuous exercise at least once or twice a week will help improve your knowledge and memory banks. So it's something that actually helps you study as you will remember things better. It also takes you away and gives you something else. And keeping fit means you can be more effective and study for longer. Another thing that makes things so much easier is to have a schedule and a plan. Instead of just randomly studying when you have time, at 5 p.m. every day, you'll do an hour of study. Setting in schedules like these means that you're more likely to stick to the plans that you have at hand. Whereas those vague plans can be passed off and I'll just say, do it later. Now, it's not just having a single plan for that one aspect but it's also to have backup plans as sometimes you can't make that 5 p.m. study for whatever reason. So if you can't study at 5 p.m., maybe it's to wake up early the next day and do some study. This has been proven through studies that if you actually set up a plan instead of just randomly saying, I will study whenever I have time, you're more likely to stick to that schedule. Now, study shouldn't just always be in the books as well, but sometimes it's also good to have discussions with your friends, colleagues, or even your professors about engineering. That discussion back and forth will help consolidate some of your ideas. You might even have some unique situations where someone brings up topics that you may not have even thought about as they've been thinking about it in a different way. So having discussions is a really good way to consolidate and improve your engineering knowledge. There's a thing known as expertise bias, where expertise has learned something so specific in a certain way, it means they're leading them down a certain solution. And someone without that same expertise will think about it in a different way. So they will not be biased by this previous knowledge. It means they can look at a problem and see a different solution. So make sure that you're actually not only just focusing on the best people or the professors, but also focusing on people of different skill sets to help improve your knowledge. And lastly, what I say is have fun in engineering, whether play with a molar kit, play with your kids, build with blocks. Engineering can be tough, but it should also be something that's interesting as it's a lifelong profession you need to be learning about. So make sure you have fun when you're learning engineering is probably my last tip. So if you want to try out this advanced business password manager, NordPass, you can try it with the code Brendan Hasty for a free three month free trial, no strings attached. If you watch the video to the end, I think you'll love this video about one thing about structural engineering you probably didn't know that will make your engineering skills easier and make you understand structural mechanics better. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can look at the below description, we've got links to my Patreon, or you can become a YouTube member. Without support of my Patreon or YouTube members, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.